David Doe is opening up regarding his experience in college, and he says he was mocked um, in college for being black, of course, in the United States of America. Mm. If I want to be precise, <laughs> pretty white, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's, it's kind of interesting that he has that. I don't really see it on a daily basis in his... I guess he, he's not very open about that aspect. When he said he, well, he grew up in America and also grew up in um, Nigeria, I didn't really, I wouldn't really, if he didn't say that, I think I forget that he's like that. I think with Tiwa Savage or Shay Shay, it's, it's, they still give me the I just got back vibes. Like they are very attached to their, so I to another that culture. My is local. Yes. Wow. <laughs> but in a good way. Oh like I just feel like he's so, like he's embraced the Nigerian culture so much. I didn't even think that that was part of him. But it's interesting. It's not news that that, that was his experience. It's very, very common for that to happen. And I like that he also brought out the struggle of being African as well. I think it's very easy for outsiders, this is not even a race thing, just anyone who isn't black and African and living abroad to think that the black struggle is the same for black Americans and Africans, and it's not. It's actually quite a disparity and, will I say, a gap between the black Americans and Africans as well. Um, and there is, to me personally, there is a level of hardship that is attached to even being African because you're not even in the black American culture anyway. So I know, I, I know, I know where he's coming from, sort of. I, I think America is a bit extreme. They carry the, you know, gold medal in that, and I've not, I've not experienced that type of racism. But I, I understand that. I just wish personally that he was a lot more articulate about it. He's talked about it many times, and he keeps talking about it, very jokingly. I don't know if he's just not capable of really having like serious conversation where he's giving us. Meat. Or maybe it's not that deep for him. Well, he brings up quite a lot, and I'm pretty sure it was deep for mm. the way he's they saying it in, our, in our Alabama, but he just doesn't give me much of like, you know. When I say deep, you know, there are people who hold on to things and they worry about it. It treats me like this. The hate keeps growing in them. They are not going to let go until right. they fight it. Mm. For him, it's not that deep. That was what life threw at him, I think. <laughs> and he has, he has mm. gone through it. He can talk about it. He can move on, go back there, do business and all that and come back. I'm pretty he's sure not he was, carrying it on his head. Yeah. Like one, yeah. you know, and I'm pretty yeah. sure he was also shielded. Like he wasn't like a black American that had no nothing and had to like hustle on the streets or anything like that so I, i'm sure to a large extent his parents must have at least been supportive and protective of him and that helps quite a bit with mm. um, battling racism um what caught my attention was the narrative of how um africans are being perceived especially when you travel when they start asking you questions like oh you guys have plasma screens oh mm. you guys have telephones you guys have wi-fi you got you see uh, like his own example is like how did you get to america and you're like i got so on funny. the plane <laughs> <laughs> do you understand like do you understand so i think um we need to tell our stories better as well mm. in as much as we're trying we're doing our best but these people still don't see us like we're actually developing we're developing nigeria is a developing country there are a lot of underdeveloped countries in africa as well but at the end of the day there's progress it's one step at a time so i think it's a narrative it's what we put out we there. do have a part i don't know if this is the time for me to share this with you guys okay well, well, yourself up. Ah, wow <laughs> please i'm still here so is a feedback on tea time maybe i'm hoping the person might be watching later on Ben Television in London and they were like, oh, Nigerian girl kids are actually cool, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Imagine <laughs> that. Like, imagine that somebody telling you, oh, Nigerian kids actually are pretty cool. cool. Mm. Like, Oh, are we not supposed We're to watching be cool? tea time? Yeah, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like, so I think we have a, a lot of play, and it starts with me and you. Now, people are beginning to see that Nigerian <laughs> kids are cool, right? And, um, probably <laughs> you know, it's, it's the truth, the narrative yeah. is changing. Yeah, do you understand? Now they're beginning to see it. So, I think we're the voice for the people, and then that is why, um. Okay, don't let me go there because that would be another talk. Okay. Because I wanted to bring in cultural appropriation and all of that, but <laughs> no, don't go let, there. Let, don't, don't, uh, I don't have the energy. Don't, don't, go. don't, Thank don't, you very don't much. even let us go yeah. there. God bless. But at the end of the day, let's just be the voice. We want We're to doing be heard. what we can do, right? Yeah. yeah.